Okay, buenas tardes. How is everybody? Yeah. Welcome, Ura Joan. Oh. Time. Better than yesterday. <laughs> Let's see how this goes. So I'm going to mix things up. I'm going to start with a little improvisation. You don't have to pay attention to the screen. Why is attention something to be paid, anyone? Sea la madre, la lógica del capitalismo racial, como vemos, no es especial. Es lo que se veía venir. Es lo que todos sabemos. No hay sorpresa ni en el contexto pandémico, que es también un contexto académico. So the series is called Language is a Virus. Can language still be desirous in a pandemic context? Let's bracket that question off. I want to talk a little bit about digitality, by which I mean the digital tally of poetic actions, acciones poéticas. But first, a cheesy confession. Una, con, una confesión un poco cursi. Vengo de un trafondo en estudios de performance. I come from a performance studies background. Though I'm ambivalent about it, me siento ambivalente al respecto. En mi época de performance studies, during my days in performance studies, no había tal cosa como performance digital. There was no such thing as digital performance. Performance was immediate. El performance era inmediato. Tenía que ver con la co-presencia. It had to do with co-presence. Slowly, the field evolved. Poco a poco, el campo fue cambiando. Y ahora se habla de performance digital, and now we talk about digital performance. I'm struck by, though, perhaps because I've read too much Deleuze, tal vez porque he leído demasiado a Deleuze, about the poetics of screening. En cuanto a la poética de la pantalla. Si han leído Deleuze, if you've read Deleuze, you know everything about, saben todo sobre digital folds, pliegues digitales. Y la porosidad de la pantalla. And the porosity of the screen. A lot of the works I'm going to share, muchos de los trabajos que voy a compartir, Nacieron digitalmente, were digitally born, by which I mean, con lo que quiero decir, compositionally, composicionalmente, dependieron de aplicaciones para hacer ruido, para generar texto. They depended on applications to make noise or generate text. And somehow what I'm doing here is reverse engineering. De alguna manera, Lo que me toca aquí es retrotraernos al espacio digital de la composición. Bring us back the digital space of its composition. So, for instance, you might have heard me. Me pueden haber oído usar estas aplicaciones, use these applications in my performances and mis performances to create texture, para crear texturas, to complicate, para complicar a poetics of bodily immediacy. Una poética de la inmediatez del cuerpo. Aquí el cuerpo mediado. Here the mediated body. El cuerpo gifiado. The gift body? Is that a thing? Well, in a jiffy, it can be. Pues si me lo invento, sí. No sé cómo traducir jiffy. Entramos en la poética de la traducción. Y cómo traducir juegos de palabras. Impensable, pues, la traducción. Unthinkable, then, translation. Insondable. Impossible to comprehend. We could talk more about racial capitalism. Podemos hablar sobre el capitalismo racial. Pero hablemos entonces de cuerpos. But let's talk about bodies, then. En mi época, en my moment, tuve mucha fe. I had a lot of faith in a poetics of body materiality, en una poética de la materialidad del cuerpo. 
empezando con mis días en el New Yorican Poets Cafe, beginning with my days at the New Yorican Poets Cafe, in conversation with people like Edwin eh, y Pedro Pietri. And so my work has evolved, y pues mi trabajo ha evolucionado a un intento de complicar esa inmediatez y traducibilidad del cuerpo, to complicate that immediacy and translatability of the body. And I should probably stop, stop talking so theoretically. Y me disculpan que hable de forma tan teórica. Le decía Felipe, I was telling Felipe, que es mi intento de hacer channeling the David Anton. It's my attempt to channel David Anton, yet another ghost, processual ghost. Otro fantasma, fantasma procesual, que es lo que somos todos, which is what we all are en el contexto de estas desarticulaciones, in the context of these misarticulations. Do you miss me? Le hago falta. Can you feel me through the screen? Me sienten ante y entre la pantalla. Se galla, se raya la pantalla. Can you scratch the screen and feel my body heat? Y sentir el calor de mi cuerpo. Mi cuerpo puerco por poco dije. I almost said my porky body. I guess it's porque soy Puerto Ricano. I guess it's because I'm Puerto Rican. It's terrible, terrible. En eso siempre desembocan las improvisaciones. That's where my improvisations always end. I guess because improvisation is my only nation. Supongo que porque la improvisación es mi única nación como sujeto colonizado as a colonized subject. But it's trendy to talk about that these days. Está de moda hablar sobre este tipo de subjetividades. Y los GIFs no están de moda, o maybe they are, and GIFs aren't so trendy these days, or maybe they are. And so I'm thinking about a poetics of porosity. Y pues estoy pensando en una poética de la porosidad que es también una poética de la diáspora. That's also a diasporic poetics. Thinking of all us boricuas who are elsewhere and being Boricua as a series of elsewheres, queer elsewheres, we could say. Otredades, otros lugares, lugares queer, si se quiere. So I came up with this term, pues me inventé este término, lo diasporoso, the diasporas, in my book, los diasporosos, in my book, los diasporosos, catafixia, Guatemala. And that book was based on Improvisations. Y ese libro se basa en improvisaciones, which I came to call walkie-talkie-techies, que llegué a llamar walkie-talkie-techies, and whose link I shared with you. Les compartí el enlace. Comienzo caminando. I start walking. Y grabando. And recording. Then I transcribe. Entonces transcribo. Y no corrijo. And I don't correct. Then I dump onto YouTube. Entonces lo cuelgo en YouTube, and I let it marinate, y dejo que se vuelva un archivo en contrasentido, a counterintuitive archive. I've been calling it an accidental archive, un archivo accidental, azaroso, casual. I thought my poetics was against the archive. Pensé que mi poética estaba en contra del archivo for celebrar el cuerpo, to celebrate the body. Y ahora pienso en contra archivos y contra historias, counter archives and counter histories. Maybe that's naive. Tal vez eso es ingenuo. Pero es lo que tengo. It's what I got. And I think there's a space for shareability within that. Y queda un espacio compartible dentro eso. Tal vez deba parar de compartir mi pantalla. I think I should stop sharing my screen. A screen is not something that can be shared. La pantalla no es algo que se puede compartir. Performance doesn't work that way. El performance no funciona de esa manera. Partible, tal vez. Splitable, perhaps. Me parto y parto. I split now. 
not time to split yet. No es hora de irse. Pero sí, hora de volver al cuerpo. But yes, to return to the body. And I thought initially, pensé inicialmente, que haría un walkie-talkie-teki para ustedes. That I would do a walkie-talkie-teki for you. Walking through the South Bronx. Caminando por el sur del Bronx. Por estos parajes industriales. Through these industrial landscapes. Guess what? The rain had other plans. Pero saben que la lluvia tuvo sus propios planes. Y aquí me tienen. And so here you have me. In the Port Morris sector of the South Bronx. In Port Morris. En el sur del Bronx. Pasando por la yarda en la lluvia. Going down into the yard in the rain. Can you see that over there? That's the Bruckner Expressway. Esa es la autopista Bruckner. De los últimos proyectos de Robert Moses. One of Robert Moses' last projects. And it shaped the lives of many of our communities. Y definió la vida de muchas de nuestras comunidades. You've read Marshall Berman, All That a Solid Melts Into the Air. Todos aquí han leído Marshall Berman. No les tengo que decir, I don't have to tell you who got displaced. I think of the poetics of displacement as it's tied to digitality, but also as it's tied to the history of particular neighborhoods, particular urban formations, particular smokestacks that no longer smoke. And I realize I'm not self-translating anymore. I lost that flow, pero se jodieron. Ahora vamos en Spanglish y que sea como sea y que no se resuelva. I have to say, as a tropical person, this is really freaky. That shouldn't be happening. ¿Cómo es posible? And oh my God, these plastic target umbrellas. Qué horror. Qué hipocresía. Un, po un poeta político con ese tipo de cultura de consumo de that type of consumer culture after criticizing racial capitalism, después de criticar al capitalismo racial. Who do I think works at that target? ¿Quién creo que trabaja en ese target donde compré, compré esa sombrilla where, that, where I bought that patio umbrella? The same people who are displaced by racial capitalism. La misma gente desplazada por el capitalismo racial. Pero hablemos de la diáspora. Ven los flamingos. Can you see the, the plastic lawn flamingos? My mom sent those to me. Me lo mandó mami. It was a joke. My mom lives in Florida. Mami vive en Florida. Es Florirican. And she thought it was the funniest thing to send these icons of normative gringo suburbanness to put in my house. Y le parecía a mami lo más cómico del mundo enviarme estos flamingos que son metonimia de la suburbanidad más normativa y gringa para que los pusiera en mi casa, en este barrio industrial, con mis vecinos New Yorkers para que se rieran de mis excentricidades. Y les cuento, and I can tell you, that I was not planning to have my, my shirt match the flamingos. No pensé que combinarían los flamingos y mi camisa. Fíjense que hasta la manguera, even the hose, there's certainly a color combo happening there. Algo está pasando en términos de colores. No sé lo que es. No soy ese tipo de poeta. I'm not that type of poet. I'm not good at colors. You want to hear something creepy? Quieren oír algo bien, bien jodido. Primero, se fijan en la maca. Way too citational, trying way too hard to bring Puerto Rico through the screen. Tratando bien fuerte de traerles a Puerto Rico por la pantalla. Y miren a las que llegué. The blue FEMA tarps. Las tarpas azules de FEMA. Que invocan al Puerto Rico post María. That bring us back to post María Puerto Rico. Even as we're in the development city. Aun cuando estamos en la ciudad del desarrollo que no para. Ven la máquina amarilla. You see the yellow machine. La construcción no para. The construction never stopped. Two days after the sirens began to quiet down. Dos días después que empezaron 
a bajar las sirenas un poco en este barrio, in this neighborhood, the construction started. Empezó la construcción de nuevo. The corpses were not buried. No habían enterrado los cadáveres todavía, pero el capitalismo racial seguía haciendo lo, lo suyo. But racial capitalism kept doing its thing. The global machine of the city had to keep moving. La máquina global de la ciudad tenía que seguir andando. Por eso, fuck el cuerpo. That's why fuck the body. And fuck facile politics of the body. Y pa'l carajo, esas políticas facilonas del cuerpo. I don't really mean it. I'm just saying it to scandalize you. No lo digo en serio. Es para escandalizarlo. Para que no se aburran digitalmente. For you not to get digitally bored. And I don't know how to end this improvisation. No sé cómo acabar esta improvisación. Así que por qué no? So why not? Uh, use my bird feeder as a percussion instrument. And let the nuts of poetry fall where they may. There's a school of poetry that says the political poetry must amplify the voice of the voiceless. Odio esas metáforas de dar voz a los que no la tienen. Odio esas metáforas condescendientes. Por eso tengo el megáfono que al fin y al cabo es phony. The, mo, mo, the phony megaphone of magnified voices. All we have is the scream. I said tra translation means that improvisation is my only nation. Dije que traducir quiere decir que la improvisación es mi única nación. Pero tal vez, but maybe, the screen is the only nation. La única nación es la pantalla. Okay, so that was an attempt at a, uh, at a, um, I don't know, I don't know what you call that. I don't think it was much of a process talk, but hopefully give you some idea. Um, so cool, uh, gracias, and let me do this. I have a couple of pandemic related uh, pieces. <laughs> Camped in empinada mind pace pie manda a man pick dama in pi Decamp in me the pana pined mac pin meada damn epic ni de mapa nice damp mapa deni maced nip femenada medic nap media pan mid pecan Ande pa mi, he commend, mapa en id, mica pend, da pena mi, denim cap, pandemia. Named pick, pidan mea, admin pick, midan epa, can dip me, pida, amen, campen id, empana, id, dance imp. Pa Medina, I pend, cam, mida pen, am, pick, end. Mi penada. So those were the same anagram lists, just uh, read out loud as opposed to in a, uh, in a GIF format. So, okay, cool. Let me. Um, some of these. 
so I did these uh, over the summer, uh, a couple of them for the, for the series that, um, uh, that Edwin was doing for, for his book. Uh, and I didn't want to do like stuff from the early pandemic moment because it feels so, so weirdly distant, but uh, these might be uh, interesting just in, in terms of the conversations that you all have been having. So just uh, thinking about uh, postcards, so. <clears throat> Ah, you remember when things went viral. Acuérdate de aquel sueño viral. Can you find lifelines in the death spiral? Con vida estás en pírrico espiral. Goddess, who will document your retiral? Guerreras, ahogarán al admiral. Time yet for the performative eye roll. Tiempo es por fin del guiño neuronal. Are silences in lines enough spacing? Algo en silencio entre líneas pasa. Can writing be no contact with tracing? Cuando se escribe sin contacto, es traza. Graphics matter most when self-erasing. Grafía del yo es borradura grasa. Too soon on all fours to start embracing. Tarde es para el que ñangotao abraza. Are solemn pages ready for their screen? Ante pantallas, la página es condena. Can quatrains somehow rhyme with quarantine? Cuarteto rimará con cuarentena. Grow molecules into a chain that long. Moléculas así se aferran tanto. Trembling cells will become a voice. How strong? Tantas células dan voz al espanto. As digital as a corpse orgasm. Ay, digital cadáver y tu orgasmo. Can poetry be both fold and spasm? ¿Cuál poesía? ¿De pliegue o de espasmo? Gravitas can grow its own sarcasm. Gritos de lucha se oyen sin sarcasmo. Terrors are holes since everyone has them. Terrenos del terror donde me plasmo. Okay, so I'll do a couple of show and tells. This is from a wonderful um, uh, uh, triptych uh, called Tropico, a tropical triptych, the poet, Puerto Rican poet Nicole Cecilia Delgado uh, published with her wonderful uh, artisanal punk guerrilla publisher La Impresora in Puerto Rico. Um, and so I'll just give you a little show and tell here. This is a poem for Pedro Pietri. This is a poem for Julia de Burgos. And finally, this is a poem for 
Esteban Valdez, who recently passed, the uh, Puerto New Yorkian Mexican uh, concrete slash fluxus poet, uh, whose work was a big inspiration on many of us. And since I shouted out um, Esteban Valdez, right, as a kind of maybe punk rock example of, uh, of uh, concrete poetry, where it's not about virtuosity, but more about the kinds of um, uh, performative irreverence, right, of, of the concrete. Uh, I'll show you a little example from my book, uh, High Density Politics, which is really, really silly, but it's my, uh, I tribute to, uh, the great Brazilian concretista Desio Pinatari. So that's a pineapple and an Atari if you're, uh, if you're keeping score at home. And then I'll just read something from, uh, from this. Uh, I, I never read this, but uh, it's kind of cool to think about poetics of self-translation um, that go beyond the, uh, the kind of English-Spanish binary since it's uh, so much of what I do. So uh, let's do this. A throw of the dice will never abolish South Beach. The tele-anomaly, the confusion of solemn families in front of the TV watching nada as metonymy of a post-mythic age. The emblems of knowing and knowing oneself sold on the truth of the other, of stalling in the glum morning of workaday agony. Telemarketing with its soundtrack of decaf smiles and a modular terror. The founding word in the mouth of a body stripped of sense, of rhythms, of sound tones, symptoms of a rank interconnectivity. In whose face will you start to say grace to transcribe the devaluation of the dullards? In whose face the occlusion of words, the failure of community projects? Quarantine citizen, Quarantine, Yenopsit, garrison, citizen, garnish, garish, nation. Where are your bros? Spitting rhymes on the white cliffs of Dover, whack flows, and at last reunited in the US of A on a beach where the plastic palms sway. Quasi, almost, could be Miami. Un coup de dé jamais n'abolira South Beach. La télé anomalie, la confusion des familles solennelles en France en face de la télé en regardant le néant métonymique d'un âge cosmétique. Les, em les emblèmes du savoir et ce savoir ravi par la vérité de l'autre. Des idées au matin plat de l'agonie quotidienne. Le télémarketing avec sa bande sonore de sourires décaffinés et en terreur modulaire. Le mot originaire, dans la bouche d'un corps déshabillé de sens, des rites, des sons, tons, symptômes, d'une interconnectivité fétide. Face à qui on se met à prier, à transcrire la dévaluation du douleur? Face à qui l'occlusion des paroles, la chute des projets communautaires? Citoyenne quarantaine, Quarantine, Yenopsit, Citoyen, Garnison, Garniture, Garnation. Où sont vos frères En cherchant des provisions dans la côte d'Angleterre et à la fin, tous réunissent aux États-Unis dans une plage à nuages, quasi presque simili.
Miami. Okay, I'll just do a couple of more things. Um, let me see. This is a little um, uh, a little cartonera that was published in in Paraguay, and I really haven't done much with it because it. Uh, you know, there were a couple of issues with the production, but uh, but this will give you an idea. So let me see. Okay, so reversible canto, nave mover, once Meyer pagan meter. Pan media. Papa Mayor. Pie Mayo. Pillar Mate. Pretender Mar. Primer Manga. Quite Liar. Red Lear. Relieve. Lean, lamer, replicas, revolver, pay, robe, gripe, saber, gusto, salve, fume, sauce, fresco, sin, fallen, suspender, Dime, taller, dice, temporal, den, ten, con, tender, come, tires, canto, veils, bailable, van, alas, yip, actual, canto. Reversible. Canto reversible. Actual. Jeep. Alas. Van. Bailable. Vales. Canto. Tires. Come. Tender. Con. Ten, den, temporal, dice, taller, dime, suspender, disparate, suave, dude solo, fallen sin, fresco sauce, fume, salve, gusto, saber, gripe, robe, ay, Revolver, lamer, réplicas, lean, relieve, leer, red, liar, quite, manga, primer, mar, pretender, mate, pillar, mayo, pie, mayor, papa, media, pan, meter, Pagan, mire, once, mover, nave. Okay, and I think I'll close. Let me see what I can do here. Uh, maybe before that, I'll just show you. Since we all want to escape, at the very least, those of us, lo que estamos en cuarentena, those of us who are in quarantine, I just thought I'd look at some, I'd show you some uh, beach images. This is from my accordion fold-out book, the, uh, the Edgemere Letters, with, um, with uh, the artist Martha Klippinger. And you can check out the book and the images on the Edgemere Letters, uh, net. So it's a text that, uh, incorporates um, uh, e-constrained, right, uh, monovocal text with photos of the Edgemere neighborhood, the Barrio de Edgemere in, in the Rockaway Peninsula. 
eh, un barrio históricamente eh, negro latino, black and brown neighborhood, that was a kind of failed resort in the 19th century. So, uh, so maybe I'll just do one little piece. Uh, here's the photo by Martha, and then I'll just read. Clement Greenberg sees red. Clement never went here. He never left the West End. Nevertheless, he never penned verses. He never retched, never sketched. He preserved the West memes, even when he rebelled, even when he rejected the repellent yes men. He'd never see between the trees he helped fell, the scene he leveled, yet he'd get these depressed streets rendered red, the West's best sperm ejected, fresh semen spent. Let Clement sleep between the seed bed. Um, okay. And How's it going, Alberto? Todo bien? I guess I have some, some flexibility. Any, any, uh, uh, any requests for the last piece based on, on what you saw of my work? Any kind of, any particular kind of work? Chris? I'd love, I'd love it if you read, sorry, I interrupted someone. I'd love it if you read some of the book that you didn't read. It was a trilogy or triptych. Oh, okay, cool. I mean, there's not a lot to read, so it, I thought it was more of a, of a thanks for show and tell. But yeah, sure. Okay, so uh, this is, I mean, it was a really, really useful poem. This is actually an elegy from when uh, the great Pedro Pietri, a New Rican poet and a mentor to many of us, died in 2004. So it's definitely a youthful poem. Uh, but um, it definitely helps summon, right, the, the figure of Pedro. Uh, in praise of Neverendo for Reverend Pedro Pietri, 1943-2004. Now the sunlit streets look comically pure as the cap cab creeps down Riverside Drive en route to El Barrio. And as the town car glides through Morningside and morning front and center, for the frowns of these forgotten statues, peering out to boundless palisades and back to the environs of Colombia, where Lorca once taught while writing Poeta Nueva York, so close yet so far from your Harlem of bulletproof rice and beans. E! Even though I want to cry, I let the cab driver complain about insurance and the price of gas. He says cab fare will go up like the middle finger of the grocery grabbing grandma he just nearly ran over. Olvídate que ahora se puso fea la cosa y está mala la ciudad. And the town car tumbles towards Lexington Avenue. B. Vaya. Sometimes I think this city is too much for me and I'm too much in tune with muted elsewheres. Sometimes I grow tired of living up to domestic Boricua prerequisites of living as bored equals under the traumatic neon of reggaeton and poetry slams. A veces necesito la apertura de ventanas innecesarias of impossible bookshelves para desmontar y equilibrar en sueños. And those are the times when I pick up Pietri's prologue for O to Roadrunner and trade in the town car to ride the mine shotgun on a downtown train, a train downtown, train a town down a train town. Hey! Each one of us in this city where no promise is preserved rides on with rearview visions that cannot be reduced to mass market chronology. All we have is the promise of the poet we cast as lifelines outside the confines of soundbite space-time. Reverendo, neverendo, I promise to read you facing the front lines, defacing the headlines, 
reading as best I can through the worry lines of faces to the lines of the faithful huddled outside these lionless libraries, where your thunders being called for by the wind has not yet reached, but so soon will, voiding all passports to institute a new enterprise of freedom. Hey, allergy means I vow to use your words to disarm the power and app conspirators to not replay the corporate charades of fake art exhibit angst to burn down the mine rot cubicle compartments to furnish these imaginary apartments for the vile and bravura. I vow to learn to sing in lapsed hangover slang and translate La Cuna Blanca into your black truth serum. Mm -hmm. Nadie se atreva a llorar. Dejen que ría, no en silencio, sino in overjoyous the epiphanic tongues, your loose joint certitude, language unhinged for all to see and to claim citizenship in your roadrunner republic of funk pollofismo. Damos gracias to the story Neverendo, the original distributor of demographic, democratic poison doses, the undertaker of the overseeing of post ceguera ciudadanos, the urban nightmares outfitter of hope, the one who dared us to depose the monuments of nations and remake them in our name. Oh, okay. So let's sing from the upspoiled beaches of remembering from the bottomless pulpit of these walk up high rises where we carry on our role as sleepless strategists with embraces emblazoned and rhymes underway, calling out the names of Neverendo! from the urgent soil of our cities. And then if you want, I can do the, uh, the Julia Burgos poem. Uh, this is actually a, uh, um, a variation on a decima, which is a poem that I work with a lot, which of course has this totally folklorized uh, legacy throughout Latin America, right? A Spanish form. So A, B, B, A, A, C, C, D, D, C. Um, and hopefully you know who Julia Burgos is, one of the great, uh, one of the greatest uh, Puerto Rican poets. So uh, one interesting thing about Julia Burgos is, of course, that she lived in, the, in New York and was often, is often considered a, a pioneer of Latina poetry, um, but also that she wrote a couple of poems in English, right? And is also considered a kind of uh, key figure, right? And kind of translingual um, writing in the US. So I'm taking two, using two refrains of hers uh, as the hook, right? As the, as the decima refrain or pie forzado. <clears throat> And the two quotes from her are, uh, my cry, there's no more mine, but hers and his forever. The comrades of my silence, the phantoms of my voice. And that's from her poem, Farewell and Welfare Island. And her second one in Spanish is from the poem, Omar no esperes mas. And it says, Inutilmente esti estiro mi camino sin luces, como muertos sin sitio se sublevan mis voces. So, puliesimas. Variaciones Julia de Burgos, variations. Poetry is just a name for our faint embodied sound. Music once it's not around, ashen lockstep with the flame. Streets still summoning the same shadows. Watch buses sever concrete. This war will never end. Our breath is the front line. My cry that is no more mine, but hers and his forever. War, as in the wounds we brought with us from tropical ports, making us echoes of sorts, boneyard songs, islands of thought shaped by blood currents and clot of empire. Then Julia gave us back our ghosts, dared the slave to speak her violence, the comrades of my silence, the phantoms of my grave. Tras de la poesía nos queda lo sonoro, Sin palabras ni coro, cuerpos 
en entropía. La calle todavía pide sombras, no cruces, sin ver los autobuses, la guerra que respiro. Inútilmente estiro mi camino sin luces. La guerra que se trajo de puertos tropicales nos hizo sucursales de huesos, un refajo de islas en el tajo de imperios. Soy desgloses de Julia. ¿La conoces? Bajo un cielo de litio. Como muerto sin sitio, se sublevan mis voces. And uh, not much I can do here for uh, uh, Esteban Valdez, right? But uh, I can give it a shot if you want. <clears throat> Let's do... Uh, um, Let's do a little shorter show and tell you one. Astros. 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 E astros. Se astros. Or se astros. Or se astros. Torce astros. Ah! Torce astros. Catorce astros. Cars, 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 and stars, and stars, and stars. Team stars, our team stars, your team stars, our team stars, four team stars. Cool. Gracias. Bravo. Brilliant. Grande. Springer, dice, ¿hay algún de, 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 de sus primeros libros sobre las flores del mall por ahí? Sí, si lo tengo, déjate una copia por ahí, la puedo buscar. Sí, please, I would love to hear you from that wonderful book of the... Of oh, the okay. Flores del mall is which year? It's 90... 2000. 2000, yeah. Yeah, I mean, the work is older, the work is from like the mid-90s, but... Yeah, like always, like sometimes I take time. For some other. No, it was one wonderful travel for all your poetry, a different kind of thing. That, that I, I remember you dancing salsa also when you were reading in the morning. And, and I think a little thirsty or more. Uh, uh, yeah. Drunk. Well, if you want, I can actually do one to close us off. I think this will be a good. It's it's actually right after La Flora del Mall, but it's well, the one I would always do. And, uh, in, uh, you know, uh, in, uh, uh, to close my sets back in the day. And I haven't done it in like 20 years. So if you want that kind of old school, uh, I think I need to get it. So you need to wait for me like 10 seconds while I get a copy of the book. Yeah, of course, we wait for you, that's great. Nice, that is really, really wonderful work. And I didn't have all the opportunities to see Ura Joan, like you know, Edwin is a really close friend for Ura Joan from, from years. And, I'm saying that the last way, that, the last time that I saw that Joanny was in our reading, Edwin. That was a great reading, yeah. W were you set yourself on fire? <laughs> yes. I don't know, maybe you can actually ask more, maybe better than me to what I want uh, different levels of police. Uh, uh, what's, what's that? Uh, can you say something about the old... Uh, Oh yeah, no. Well, uh, Urayuan uh, and I met. Um, I don't know where we met, but uh, I guess from, through the New York Cafe, of course. And you know, we have Pedro and many similar um, crossovers. But then um, we just stayed in contact. And then Urayuan was actually uh, just starting at NYU when we met, right, Ura? You were just uh, starting to teach there. Yeah, now I'm a professor. Yeah, so. <laughs> And then, and you just dived into knowledge. You just dived into, or, or I should say, knowledge. Knowledge was always with you, but you really got into figuring out the history of your linearity. And and it's beautiful to see how you access all that parts of history 
in your in your work. It's it's really great. Gracias, maestro. Gracias. That's beautiful. Well, I'll do this, but this is from my early Edwin will remember my call and response era. So that and this is very New Yorkian, as Edwin can testify. Very like. Pedro Pietri, Tato La Viera, that kind of school. So if I'm going to do it, you all need to actually call and respond. So unmute and get ready to like do the little chorus with me, okay? So okay. Um, uh, since I started off with the racial capitalism uh, thing, I'll close with the cool logic of late capitalism, right? This is, uh, was like two months too late to get included in La Flora del Mall, but it's like the manifesto to that era in my poetry. So. Um, <laughs> La lógica cool. Cantémosle al día mítico de identidad holograma. 15 minutos de fama. 20 si eres político. Ya salió el sol ciclítico en el pabellón sombrío. De la era del vacío, lanza su luz desigual, la lógica cultural del capitalismo tardío. Y las de comunes cosas en las ciudades antiguas, sexualidades ambiguas, fast food, fronteras porosas. Guerras de químicas rosas, etnias que escurren rocío, y la utopía es un río que vomita capital. La lógica cultural del capitalismo tardío. El amor desregulado por nuevos medios de ocio, Senos plásticos, negocio de prótesis, Prozac, mercado. Eros suburbanizado, pornografías de estío, como geishas de Darío en flujo libidinal. La lógica. Cultural del capitalismo tardío. Everybody do the cool with me. Cada cual lo que le plazca. Música mundo, new age. Ricky Martin y John Cage. De gira por tierra vasca. Que el feto del odio nazca. De la hojarasca de hastío. Nueva trova, power trio. Queer punk, flamenco, tribal. La lógica. Cultural del capitalismo tardío, cibernético estrambótico, macrobiótico, informáticas, supermodelos hieráticas, geografías de lo erótico, lo ecológico y lo gótico, satélite, elite, mol frío, simulacro o albedrío en el chinchorro global. La lógica. Nafta Mercosur, o sea, Baudrillard y Lipovetsky, el Sports Utility, el Jet Ski, Comunidad Europea, Hollywood Hills y La Brea, la favela, el caserío, y esta fiebre sin final. La lógica cultural. El capitalismo tardío. Okay. Really quickly, here's the English. It's a different beat, so you need to like... Actually, let me, let me do this uh, to bridge then and now. Let's do a little smartphone beat here. So, so take it away. So. Okay, I got it. I got it. I work alone. <laughs> oh, this time you ain't gonna have. Let me gain for the employed. 
We're here to discuss the hologram show in the era of the void. Some say modern man is hollow. Others say it's a condition of the spotting. Do you follow? Or this you do some exposition? Okay. See the common grave. What is the ancient city? The fast food, the forest border, the ambiguous sexuality, the death, blood, and death necessities, the wars of chemical warfare, ash flows from utopian rivers, and the market never closes. This is the logic. This is the logic. This is the true logic of late capitalism. In the cold that marketplace, people hold you know it of leisure. Love has been deregulated, plastic breast prosthetic seizures. In the suburbs, neighbors mourn the death drive of their repeaters. Late summer's full of popcorn, rolling wonder bags and speedos. And come to what you please from what you wish to do. Ricky Martin and John Cage are touring the fast tyrannies. You can sing your songs of peace, pop, punk, folk, tribal, assorted, but the violence will not cease. Hate speech just can't be a burden. This is the true logic. This is the true logic. This is the true logic of late capitalism. Macrobiotic, cybernetic, fiber optic, all the way. Geodotic, super malls, satellites and virtual malls. Vegan power lunch, grand slams, world elite, money go round. Free will or free pillow shams. In this global shanty town, this is the cool logic. This is the cool logic. This is the cool logic of late capitalism. Nafsamer Kosur Hamas DVDs and open mic. Water crash and motocross, SUVs and mountain bikes, trailer parks, gated communities, high rise ghettos and favelas, acquired diplomatic immunities, self help profits, trail novelas, Mexico, Miami, Rio, Euro Disney, Bollywood. Dell, Intel, Taco Bell, Geo, Stanford postdocs in the hood. I'll stop fronting. Pedagogical. One last question. Extra credits. This cool logic ain't too logical, but it's still cool. Do you get it? This is the cool logic. This is the cool logic. This is the cool logic of late capitalism. Ahora sí, gracias. There you go. Blast from the town. Bravo, bravo. Yeah, I need an ID after that. I, I did a reading at Princeton like an hour before this, so I'm like, I, you know, I'm done. So. Oh, great! That's kind of from that time, Las Flores del Mall. 
that's yeah, that's from my time. I think it, by a month or whatever, I could have gotten into Las Flores and Mall, but it's like the manifesto. It distills everything in Las Flores and Mall, basically. So yeah, it's like the old whiskey, like better and better, you know, like. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Wait. Yeah, what? the menus are like DVDs and like Frederick James. That's I mean, it's 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 old, but amazing, amazing how how you mix all that kind of situation, political rhythm, new logicals, uh, language within the language, the French poems. That's, I have a lot of questions to you that, but I don't know if some uh, public want to react and put a question to Rayoan before I start to talk to him, like for hours. <laughs> My Mac is full of peanuts now from whatever I was doing with the peanut, uh, the bird feeder. I, I love your, your, your I don't, in a moment, your place of words, like a, you, you, you made me think like Diaporosos. What is the, the name, Diaporosos, the, the poem? Yeah. Yeah, that kind. Of, it made me think of that kind of uh, magical action that makes some gods in the Greek uh, scene, like uh, like Castor and Pollux, when they was blessing, they came to became together Dioscuro, you know, the Dioscuros, and was uh, the the god of all the uh, the Orpheus, Pythagorean uh, poets of that time. And, and I imagine the same the same moment, you know, like a kind of wow, rhythm, sound, actuality. Animals, uh, cries, uh, dreams. Uh, in, in, in. No, you make me travel a lot. Thank you so much, Ryan. It's, it's really very nice. sweet, gracias, and very kind. I just think of it as like bad dad puns. That's kind of my poetics, basically. It's just a bunch of bad dad puns. Pero el concepto de pun como que no existe en, en, en español, right? It's like we don't have, I mean, we have puns exist, but the, como conceptualmente, ¿verdad? No se me ocurre una poética del pun en Latinoamérica. No sé si la haya. People play with language, of course. People and, and there's even, uh, um, you know, uh, uh, you know, polysemia, right? Using the same word and, and connotations and all that. But actual like puns, I don't know. It's a very, it's a very gringo thing. And that's definitely my 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 gringo hat. Yeah, and also your your your, your dominion with the, like New York and poetry, you know, with the, the Spanish, Spanglish, and the, and I love the moment that you pass to French in a moment to the French French Spanglish. <laughs> Yeah. Sorry for that French. That's terrible. I know my French is terrible, but I'm like, yeah, yeah. and you come to the text and you receive the semantics and the same to the sound. It's really complete. And when you put your voices and your rhythm, and and I saw you dancing also once. Uh, that's that's nice, you know. When you're dancing and and at the same time making your poetry is really, it's a kind of a Dionysius uh, returning from from all the serious sound artists sometimes, you know, <laughs> or poets, you know, the, the serials. Well, that right? is, the, is the New Yorican tradition. Like I said, watching people like Edwin and, and Pedro Pietri perform, I'm like, wow, that is not only really cool, it's like really fun. Mm -hmm. And to me, fun is a great, uh, de nuevo, fun, que, como se traduce fun en español, diversión, right? So it's, it's a really, it's also a very untranslatable concept or a concept with no equivalent translation, but, uh, Um, yeah, I think the, the, the radical power, the political power of fun, si se quiere, is, is something that uh, uh, the, the people like, uh, you know, like Pedro Pietri opened up for, for a lot of us. Yeah, the, the fun it, should be a human right. Yeah. I talked the other day when Martin Gavins and, and Sophie, uh, the last three or four sessions about the joy, the political of joy in poetry, you know, the action of like kind of fun of joy moment when you're like uh, enjoying and making enjoying of the others like not only that story of the suffering romantic uh, poet that they have completely <laughs> under under the caves you know but uh, anyway it's 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 all the healthy in a way that <laughs> contemporary some poetry you know? i don't know and an, an actual political you know what is so uh, when you go out that I would love you to get out again in a moment to show us the, the Bronx and that that's some places. Sure. And, and when you pass, yeah, maybe, maybe to say something serious, I think the you know part of the reason I got into this whole um, you know this like weird digital uh, you know performativity and you know is is my sense that as much fun as like la logica cool is cool logic is right. It's kind of the the fun almost occupies all the bandwidth right. Uh, And I think I've, uh, um, first I've become, I think, more confident as a poet that you don't always have to entertain people. You can do stuff that's just, you know, weird or, you know, 
que carajo, what the fuck, right? Uh, but then also I think politically, I think it just, uh, for in, in a lot of our, you know, of our home, of our homelands, right? It became really, you know, imperative to hold space for loss and death and mourning and all that. And so you don't give up on fun entirely, but you try to think about a poetics where the fun isn't so amped up. You're like, okay, fun, but with enough, you know, enough of a toggle where you make room for, you know, for the darker stuff and, the, you know, and, uh, and just the ghosts, you know, the ghosts who, uh, you know, who are always in our work. So. Yeah, and when you, when you open the, the semantics, uh, you know, the, the, the neologism and semantics, like uh, between English and Spanish, like reverendo, neverendo, by example, you know, you start with reverendo and, and, and also in French it's rever to a reverend, the end, or reverendo, and also with the gift at the, the, the beginning. You know? How how you feel like that that potential of, of revolution, of uh, of political action, of changing the sense of the words in your, in your poetry, between language and in the middle of, of that cross over between imagine, imagination, improvisation, and, and ideas, you know, and feelings, and so. Yeah, I mean, one thing to me is, is uh, um, what's inspiring about the neo rican tradition is the idea that poetry can and should be cultural work, right? Uh, so thinking of like, you know, the, the young lords were poets, right? They wrote very different kind of poetry maybe, right? But you also have poets gave us like a term like loisaida. They actually named neighborhoods, right? They started social movements, right? And a lot of the, some of the poetry that we're doing was very maybe, you know, conventionally, right? Revolutionary, we think of as political poetry, but you had also people doing, you know, uh, occupying, you know, uh, vacant lots and turning them into cultural centers. So this idea of just, uh, you know, an art that's rooted to uh, a kind of, of um, you know, experience and community is important to me. And I always think of Miguel Garin, I write about this, you know, as a scholar in my, in my book on, on the Neurican poets. Uh, Miguel Garin, the founder of the cafe, calls it transformations uh, before the public eye as a kind of psychic healing, right? And see, right, so what does it mean to come from a space of trauma or being colonized and being told you don't have a language and that your poetry isn't valuable and to say, I'm going to, by, somehow by sharing my, you know, my pain, it can become transformed into something else. And that sounds very, you know, romantic, but I think it was really subversive in 1975 when it was the heyday of like, you have to be a third world Marxist and you have to think of revolution in these very programmatic terms, right? And so one thing that Algarin and the New Yorkian poets were thinking about was like cultural politics, right? Culture, and not just in the kind of cultural industry sense, but but in terms of the sense of practices that that sustain us also, right? And so that was really important to me, the, the sense that, uh, you know, performance is fun, but it's also about the ability to, you know, Bodies into connection with them. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. that, what you just said, in this uh, sense of fun, too, and what Martin was uh, going towards as well. The, the first piece you started with. Did you do that recently? And is that something that you use in these screen performances? So to keep the fun at bay, uh, you can have some fun, but it shouldn't be conventional political fun, nor should it just be fucking zaniness for its own sake. Although that's fun too, or good, useful, wise maybe. So yeah, how did, how, what was the gestation of that first visual piece when you were improvising on top of it? And, and how have you used it? Um, I think it's, it's uh, you know, uh, uh, the, the, that piece is part of a series that really is rooted in surviving these past few months, the summer in particular, and feeling like poetry is, language is absolutely not up to the task of confronting the horrors, right, and the violence that we're witnessing. And of course, that's not true. Language is always up to the task. Is it, are we up to the task? right, to, to call something poetry. And so I couldn't, I could, it was hard enough to think for a lot of us just to, you know, get by from one day to the next. So I feel like, okay, I can't write, I can't write an essay, I can't, I can't even translate, which is I try to find something to do whenever. And so making those little gifs was a way of saying, okay, I can do something, right, uh, even within my sense of powerlessness, 
Um, and I think also it was important to me that it was GIFs because they're the kind of cheesiest and most annoying, right? Uh, um, in a way, uh, you know, uh, digital pop culture phenomenon. And that also felt to me like a way to counter Trumpism. So I've been working on a book as a scholar on like Latinx hashtag politics. So like Latinx folks in the US and how the, you know, the internet was really, social media in particular was really important to the rise of terms like Latinx, the term which people fight so much about, it was a hashtag first. And I go into why it was always meant to be divisive and messy, right? It was a kind of critical term coming from, from really like uh, queer, migrant, undocumented communities, right? Uh, black communities as well. So, um, so to me, uh, a lot of the folks I'm looking at in my work as a scholar are folks who are in a way trying to do a reverse mirror of Trumpism. They're saying we are the undocumented people, the queer people, right? The people of color who are despised, right? And who are trolled violently every day on Twitter by Trumpism, right? And we're gonna use these digital forms to just like, you know, deflect it back at him. And so really interesting to see like really like non-binary queer undocumented uh, performance artists, right? Uh, you know, use the really violent masculinist form of the meme folks, you know, the internet memes you know, come from bro tech bros trying to gross each other out basically, you know, over long hours of programming when like, you know, programmers were all white dudes and could gross each other out and it has, they have a kind of political incorrectness and a violence built into them. So I'm really interested in the fact that you can use, uh, you know, you can think about the media ecology of, of GIFs as already embodying kind of FU element, right? So in a way it's like, hey, you people who tell us to fuck you, well, fuck you, right? It's a kind of counter to, to yeah. kind of Actually, the, the controlling violence of, the digital, of our digital moment. And so it feels like something that's not hard to do. I mean, you use anagram generators and GIF generators, right? It's all free, it's all online. So I'll just take a term I hate, right? Like, or that annoys me, right? And so one of the first ones I did was I can't breathe when it came back this summer and then no puedo respirar in Spanish. And I'll be, I'll be, you know, I'll be showing that. Um, you know, soon. So, so I take a term that really feels loaded for me about which I don't think I can write, and I let the anagrams and I let the gifs, and I, you know, I let the, you know the digital ecosystem do the work for me and think of it as a kind of, um, you know, as a kind of uh, uh, strategic recycling, right, of the kind of digital violence that's aimed at so many of our communities. So, and as a way to like, you know, uh, engage creatively at a moment where language feels. Uh, not up to the task, right? Uh, certainly no kind of romantic imagination. So I'll have, I want to shout out one person who uh, is really important, who you should all know, who is the um, Afro-Sapotec poet, Alan, Alan Pelaez Lopez, whose work is really incredible. If you don't know their work, definitely check them out. But so they're uh, at Migrant Scribble on Instagram. They're super, super influential, right? In, uh, in Latinx uh, social media. Uh, and so their work is one of the ones that I'm writing about right, as a critic and thinking, hey, this work models something that I'm really interested in. And so beyond their um, social media and Instagram, uh, you know, activism, they're also an incredible poet and performer. So check out, uh, check out uh, their work. I just send that up to the name. I don't know if I, I, I don't know. If I, sure. Yeah, it's, 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 it's lovely. Yeah, it's, it's, I don't know if anyone wants to make a question about it, but I just like, before that, that say you that uh, for me it's very important that the question of language. I also travel between French and Spanish, and, and I, I, I remember one poet in, in Chile before I came to France. He said, uh, "Armand Duribe, don't 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 try the the wrong way of Vicente without or to write in in another language that your mother's tongue." You know? He said that uh, when you are in another language, the, the sound gives you a meaning that uh, that is. That, Make a kind of sweet freedomness of uh, of meaning, and and I, I felt you in that kind, of, uh, and, and it's past to semantics after you know when you say the poems of the pliegue or the spasmo, you know, when you think like the to plea uh, the plea al stretch, you know? um, how do you feel that tension between tongue, mother's tongue and outside tongues and stratigraphy? I don't know what. How how do you live that? How do you feel you in your life? <laughs> Obviously, you have to get into like my personal history, right? So I tell the story. This is the, the level of achievement, right? Is uh, and this is because this, this could only happen in 1971, right? But my 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 gringo dad was my Puerto Rican mom's 
American lit professor at the University of Puerto Rico, right? So, uh, so I think I grew up in a household which was not only bilingual, but where my parents tried to be woke, right? And, and, and switch languages. Uh, so my mom would talk to me in her English with an accent, right? Uh, entonces mi papá me hablaba también en su, en su español con acento. Y creo que asocio esos, esos uh, españoles e ingleses marcados. Those, those mark English and Spanish, I, I think of effectively, right? They feel, they, they ground me. So it, it's obviously for fun and to be cheap. And I know I've talked to Edwin about that because, you know, the, the idea that, that, you know, Puerto Rican Spanish can be wrong, right? Or it can be messy, but that's kind of part of its beauty. I think for both of us, that becomes compositional, right? You say, I want to I write work that can be very avant-garde or very legible in white spaces, but it has to have that, that sabor, that swing, right? So, song, right? Edwin, Edwin's like song me song, right? Uh, uh, it has to have a little bit of that to honor like where, you know, where, 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 you know, where, where one comes from. Uh, so yeah, I would say that, the, the, uh, it's definitely tied to my own, um, you know, per, uh, personal history. And I would say that I'm also trying to think about it beyond uh, virtuosity, right? This is a paradox that I, I come up with a lot as a translator, right? Is, as a literary translator, is you're working in spaces where a certain kind of mastery is prized, right? So, so proper translation, you have to like get the poet right and do something that's really, really, you know, uh, you know, elegant. And there's all kinds of folk, new, a new generation of folks trying to think about activist translation and, you know, and conceptual and procedural translation. But institutionally, the space of translation remain, you know, the U.S. remains really white, really conservative, right? Uh, and so I think I try to approach my own self-translations. Uh, as having enough of that song, that sabor, right? To, to not let themselves become just artifacts of mastery. So if you'll notice, if you read my self-translations, they're off because they're so based on improvisation, they're not exact, right? So I'll pick something that has a different resonance. And so I'm thinking really about the non-equivalence between languages is something that I want to hold on to, right? Uh, and I think as, you know, uh, all of us Latin American folks, we, we laugh a lot about the misunderstandings between our Spanish, right, and 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 how it's one Spanish but it isn't, and and these languages have different, even even though the, it's an imperial, both English and Spanish are languages of empire. Uh, they're also inflected and racialized and classed in all kinds of really specific ways, um, and I think I'm interested in in always having an English and a Spanish that are marked, right, marked as as my body and as my personal history is marked, but hopefully open for other people to mark as well. So, hey, take my GIFs and do your own GIFs and like collage them and, you know, break them up and bust them up. You know, they're not for mastery purposes, right? Do whatever the heck you want to with them and tear them apart if you need to. So, so let your own language be marked or mark your language on my own, right? And think of a kind of a more participatory sense, maybe of, of, of one's language history where, where language is kind of always, always becoming. So I'll give a shout out there to someone like, uh, Raquel Sala Rivera, because he gave a brilliant talk uh, um, with Rachel Galvin uh, uh, yesterday, which is on YouTube, so definitely check that out. It is utterly brilliant, talking about his self-translation practice. And I was so uh, inspired by it, because it's so, it's such a, first, in his case, as a, as a trans person, right, thinking about how the trans in translation operates in, in his work is really interesting. Um, but also the idea that, um, uh, somehow uh, self-translation has to operate with some kind of non-fixed sense of the self, right? So uh, you don't want self -trans to put the focus on translation so that translation is where all the action happens and the self is a given. Really, who, who, who among us know ourselves? We don't, right? So the self in translation is as messy as the translation in self-translation. And I think Raquel was really brilliant at thinking about his, you know, queer, uh, queer trans, right, uh, Boricua perspective, right, as informed by a lot of that. Uh, and I think it's one thing I'm allowing myself to be more confident about is, you know, let it all be marked, right? Uh, so when I did this book, I think I was still much more worried about conventional translation. Oh, will people in Puerto Rico understand my poetry now that I'm writing in US Latinx context? And conversely, all this weird Puerto Rican stuff will be legible in all these other spaces. And eventually I just forgot about that and said, it's always marked, it's always me. 
let those marks be beautiful and maybe find a way of writing and performing and engaging with technology that reveals the kind of mark nature of, of that language. So. Yeah, and also I, I, the, the very local and, and, and present moment, you know, like, like the old troubadour poet at the same time, they were like journalists. They, they, they count the story of the moment in, in, a, in the place and also they count the, their own biography. And after they start to read the poems, they're really like uh, are connected with a primitive poetry that is really local because you're not, you don't say I'm, I'm, I am in the United States or New York, you are in the Bronx. You know, and, and it's local at the same time, universal and, and unique connection. You know, it's, it is a collective reality. Edwin is also part of that kind of, of family. Uh, and, and you, uh, you arrive to transmit that everything on joy, you know, and joy from past, from postal card to, I don't know, to, to video, to gifts, to moment, to experience, to instruments. Uh, really, really, uh, it's, it's, a, it's a real pleasure. You know? It's like joy, pure joy. I mean, I think it comes from our communities also. If, if folks, you know, we're watching like uh, what I call uh, hashtag Soberano, right? The sovereign summer of 2019 in Puerto Rico with the Rique Renuncia protest. That was one huge party, you know, but it was a political, it was a political revolution, but with a lot of like, you know, you know hot, you know, hot people dancing, you know, and like that. Yeah, sounds, sounds good. Sign me up for that revolution, right? And so I think, uh, I think it reflects where I am. So again, I, I, I'm right by the express, the expressway, Robert Moses, all that's true. But what maybe you couldn't hear is that my neighbors on both sides are New Rican, right? Which is great. It's a, it's a tiny little New Rican industrial block. And then the one guy is always like playing his salsa or his, you know, or his hip hop and fixing his car or whatever. So like, you know, his, his joy, right. And the joy of the kids next door, it's always, you know, there's always that noise of just people living their lives. And that always, that helped me cope right in the middle of the pandemic is, Hey, you know what? El vecino sigue limpiando su carro. Los nenes de la vecina están, están gritando y brincando y bailando and having fun. You know, life goes on. It's beautiful. And so that sense that, um, and from my perspective as, you know, personally, but also as a professor of Latin American studies, um, the Latin American left has a complicated record when it comes to things like joy, right? There have been moments of it, but it's not how the official narrative, right, of uh, <laughs> politics, radical politics is written. Uh, so I think when I think about what does it mean to be a Puerto Rican Boricua for me, I think, well, uh, my neighbors may never go to Puerto Rico, Right, they and they're certainly not part of any decolonial imaginary in Puerto Rico, which is still shaped by, you know, uh, middle class, upper middle class, you know, light skinned elites, like a lot of stuff in Latin America still to this day. So those people are not a part of any decolonial imaginary. But get get guess what? Their joy is part of my own personal decolonial imaginary. And so when I share with you, I want to bring the joy of the neighbor fixing his car, right, and of the kids uh, and of the neighborhood kids playing, because that's. That's all we got, and ultimately that feels more sustaining for me politically than like these these empty ideologies, right? That don't necessarily reflect the, the kind of lived experience. Of, uh, how, how you 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 show that to your students? Because some of poets here present, they they make some lessons to in the university, and the scholars like you, can you arrive to transmit that that the spirit of uh, of joy and, and and improvisation and experience to your students? In, uh, you are professor in Portuguese, uh, Spanish, and, and, and English. I don't know. Like, <laughs> yeah. what, what is the experience? Well, I try, I try to um, uh, to have students claim their own practice. So even if I'm doing like a conventional literature class, I try to have a creative component and have a, have a creative. So, so hey, st student, do a project that you're passionate about. It could be tied to an art project or an activist project or whatever, something that really sustains you. And then write me a personal essay where you contextualize it, right, in light of, of the class. So you, I try to like, teach so that I ask folks to connect the kind of intellectual conversations we're having to places of joy or of nourishment in their own lives. And then kind of hopefully the theory and the fancy words can take care of itself, right? So, um, uh, and then of course I think, you know, for example, I choose to live in the South Bronx, right? Not in NYU housing, partly because that's where my New Rican family is from, right? Uh, um, but also I think because, you know, the space has, as, as difficult and as complicated as it is, is also kind of sustaining, right, uh, in a way. 
that uh, you know the, 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 that really couldn't be replicated uh, anywhere else. So kind of find your people, right, and find your passion, and hopefully you have mentors along the way who help you uh, work from your passion, right? So. Um, you know. well, uh, I have a, a question. I, I wonder if you could talk about um, uh, the pandemic. It seems like um, we're in a new isolationist sort of reality. Not, it's not even the new normal. It's just the way it is. And um, I wonder, uh, you, you're, you're so, um, um, you know so much about the poetics of Lat Latinidad and, and um, the various struggles of um, uh, minorities over the past. Is there like a, in a way, um, a new minority that's that's all of us because we're all isolated is there some kind of like a pandemic shift in that mindset that can kind of apply maybe towards your hashtag project almost to our, or social media like where we're also in our, our own space and we already do that with our poetry is there a connection to to that sort of struggle to that revolution being a new revolution in the isolation I, I my question is all over the place but it's basically centered around isolationism and how the pandemic has sort of redirected our uh, approach to joy, to words, to language, all, you know, big question. Um, I mean, certainly you would hope that the current situation, right, makes our current um, voices, right, uh, feel unsustainable and it leads us in the direction of a more joy-based society and maybe, you know, basic stuff more uh, work-life flexibility, using the technology to like think creatively about what kind of work maybe doesn't need to, to be done. And certainly I think initially in the, in the pandemic, a lot of us were like, oh, maybe this is so new to folks. It will jar everyone. We'll think of a new paradigm for stuff. But pretty quickly you see that the effects of this aren't felt right equally, that they're dis dis this disproportionately affects certain, certain communities. So we can you can get hung up on the terms we used to call those communities or to organize those communities. That's not that interesting uh, for me. Uh, so yeah, I do think there's, that hopefully, right, we'll be in a place where psychically, for the sake of the planet, we can listen to our energies and our joys, right? And, uh, uh, um, you know, in a way that's more rooted in our bodies and rooted in our relationship to each other and to the world around us. Um, but ultimately that's not gonna get rid of like the, you know, the, the power differentials and, the, and the, those inequalities. So hopefully we can do both. We can appeal to the joy within all of us, but also get mad and organize, right, around the, you know, the kind, the, the, these kinds of, of uh, you know, unequal power dynamics, the, the you know, the, the disproportionately affect, affect certain communities. Was that the question? I don't know if I, if I, if I, if I think about hashtags in particular, I don't even know. I, I I'm not sure. I, I it's it's sort of it is about like uh, how of course we're all learning how to like re uh, realign ourselves with our new emotions, with our new with our new place in our world. I wonder in the experimental realm, you know, with with language and how how can that become something that still maintains the mistakes, like the the reality of like shift and everything. I don't know. Yeah, I, I think maybe picking up on your point, I I would hope that. Um, we keep doing this kind of stuff like here. Thank you, by the way. For, and on the one hand, oh, it's more free labor and Zoom and whoever owns this is monetizing it for their dark purposes and working to undermine us, whatever, right? But at the other level, I think that the, the kind of messiness, the sloppiness, I kind of love when like I was unmuted, I was muted at the start. Of, I love the fact that that happens. It's like the bad, you know, mic feedback at the start. I don't know, there's something, Charles Bernstein you know, has that essay that like, poetry readings have lasted so long because they really haven't changed from 100 years ago. There's something so like raw and low tech that you can do it anywhere. They're so they're simple enough and they haven't been messed with the formula. The, it, it, you could draw a straight line from the Cabaret Voltaire to us, which is kind of cool. No matter how, you know, how isolated we feel, we're doing Dada basically. It's not that different, right? And so, so my sense is, I hope that something of that messiness and that sloppiness survives in these digital spaces as well, right? Where we can have the feedback and the distortion and the, the mutedness and it doesn't become some like, you know, work factory for, you know, I don't know. So um, I know what you all are thinking. I've been thinking that just the whole earlier system uh, and I'm, I'll direct this to like, uh, um, you know, Felipe and, and, and Martin, folks like that. 
the, I think, I'm thinking of the whole Latin American like poetry festival circuit where you, you, know, you don't get paid or you get paid almost nothing to spend your, <laughs> your life traveling around the world networking. And I'm like, okay, well, what's, what's that about, right? And so my sense is that probably isn't sustainable, right? And so it will come back to some extent but maybe we'll do a fifth or a 10th of the festivals. And I'm like, that's a good thing. I I'm sad because I, I like to travel, but I'm okay doing one of those a year, right? Uh, and then maybe thinking of other ways in which we can, uh, we can organize ourselves or we can include more folks, right? Where we can reach to folks outside of the poetry bubble. So yeah, I want to hold on to the messiness of this moment because as, as brutal as it's been, and, you know, and as many goats as we're all walking with, I think we, you know, um, you know, we, we, you know, we have the chance to carry this messiness with us into our work in a, in a, in a way that I think makes us, uh, um, you know, have to kind of decolonize our practice a little bit to use that really, you know, not think about our mastery and our perfection and our careerism, you know? Uh, I'm thinking about that because the new book, which I should have read something from, but uh, I think, I guess the postcards are in the new book. So that, that'll be out in the, uh, in the spring with the University of Arizona. I'll share the link now. And I'm thinking, what am I going to do for a tour? Like, it feels weird to pretend there's going to be a tour. So I'm also testing with you things that I might do in a kind of reconfigured um, kind of book tour format where maybe it's about, um, hey, here's five different ways to share your work on Zoom. And I'll do five different ones for each reading. Here's some postcards and here I walk in my backyard and so on, right? And so I like the, the freshness of it and that maybe it gets me away from just... I have a new book out, I have to tour, here's my set. Thank you, thank you, Milwaukee, it's been great. Thank you, Milwaukee, seriously, Wisconsin, but uh, okay. Maybe there's a, a sense that might happen in the future once we're relatively out of this situation is you'll have person events, events and you'll have these events. And yeah. you know, to a certain extent, there can be a merging. It's an internationalization of sure. not poetry, but tons of other, hobbies, art forms, yeah. uh, politics, etc., And that might be a good thing because it makes us more intimate with each other. We start to experience, even if it's through the screen, a little bit more of what things are like in other parts of the world. And it could help the revolution ultimately. <laughs> That's great. Yeah, I don't know how you all feel, but I feel like um, uh, a, even a couple of years before the pandemic, I was feeling pretty isolated just from my fellow poets um, in, a, in ways that made me question, right? The supposed new choices that technology had, had wrought. You know, I think maybe it's like, cause New York and gentrification and everybody has to live far away from each other, but you would go to a lot of readings and see a lot of folks that you care about. And then you'd say hi to them and give them the hug and then not see them again, right? And my sense was that this had become a kind of cheapened version of the, of kind of physical co-presence and like, well, what's the point if, if it's like, hey, how's it going? Here's my poem. Uh, I gotta grab the train, bye, it's been fun. Then maybe let's not do that. Maybe let's have that online and save like in-presence events for where there can be like a really, really beautiful co-presence and, and maybe where we can dream together when we get the chance to be together, maybe we'll value that more and maybe we'll uh, demand more, right, of in-person exchanges in a way that make us feel just connected to other folks. Because I think, obviously, as, you know, a bunch of books are written, a lot of what's happening in terms of global politics, just folks being disconnected from each other and being left to stew in their own paranoias and, you know, fantasies and, and, and yeah. stuff. A lot of us are really seeking out uh, connection. I'm also an only child, so I have that constant need of, like, Quiero familia. I want to have the big family that I never had, and maybe I'll get it through poetry, right? And so, uh, so I think it hit me hard over the past couple of years. Like, wow, that's that's not how yeah, well, business operates yeah. anymore because people don't have the time. So maybe yeah. I'll just do stuff digitally, and if I come together with you, it's either because you're paying me a boatload of money. It better be a boatload, right? Or because we're genuinely sparing sharing space in a way that's meaningful and and probably more than the second and the former. So I don't know how folks feel, because I guess I'm kind of crowdsourcing, what are you all planning on doing, even when, right, there's some degree of normalcy and things reopen. I feel like I don't want to trivialize um, physical co-presence anymore. It's, you know, I felt like that was happening just on its own, thanks to like capitalism. For sure. 
billions of or hundreds of millions of others. And actually, this is interesting what you say, because when you use the word Jiffy, okay, which I always think of as GIF or a Giffy kind of thing, when you first used it in one of your pieces, I didn't really ken that you were thinking about uh, a GIF. For me, and this alludes to what you're saying, it was like in a Jiffy, yeah? So you know what that means as an American, and also a Jiffy bag. And I was like, wow, that's really, really cool that he's kind of using this word. Now that you add that other layer on it in your, in your discussion here for a while, uh, it's even thicker. And, uh, but it's interesting because this thing of in a Jiffy, yeah, co-presence, but in a Jiffy, I got to do something else. I got to look at my phone, you know? I was definitely thinking of both of them. That was by design. And I was also thinking, I, mean, I guess I didn't, I didn't do a good job of emphasizing it in my performance, but I was thinking of Spanglish. In Spanglish, el gifi y el gifi, right? Unless you put a U in between, right? They're, 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 they're the same thing, right? Uh, you know, so, so the two of them blur. So yeah, I'm definitely thinking about that kind of immediacy, you know, of, of the format. So. Yeah. Anyone have a question to, to Rayoan? En español puede ser, en Spanglish, en francés si puedo. ¿Y qué es yo? Uria, ¿cómo estás? How are you? Carlos here. Can you hear me? I can hear you. Muy bien. So I I wanted to ask you about your uh your translations, your your work as a translator, and particularly about Pablo de Roca. Uh, oh, cool. I don't know if the uh, if, if if people knows that Uda translated uh, Pablo de Roca's poems, and um, I wonder what what happened there. What 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 caught your attention of this uh, modernist poet that is that is kind of lo located in the lineage of Guidobro, Girondo, Vallejo, and um, what what made you uh, feel that you can translate it? And 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 if if you were like. I don't know, uh, like uh, aware or like uh, familiarized with, uh, with 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 that kind of language, with the with, with the landscape or like uh, the the jargon that that Pablo de Roca uses in his, in his poems, and and how can, can how can that be? I, I mean, translated or like located in in a place like uh, the language of the Caribbean, or 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 you know, what happened there? Yeah, yeah, that's, that's a great story. Um, I mean, partly it's what you mentioned, right? That all the other poets you mentioned, I knew about, right? Because they're pretty, they circulate within Latin America and beyond Latin America to an extent. But De Roca, you know, has been a relatively, you know, Chileno phenomenon, right? People who are specialists in the era will know who he is, right? But he doesn't have that kind of wider readership. So I think when I, you know, when I came across his work in, you know, in at the, the Universidad in Puerto Rico, I was like, who is this free? Que loco. And I love my, I love me some poetas loco. That's, that's Pietri. That's like, you know, all that's, like, that's, that's me. I feel like the, those are the people. I'm like, wow, this guy's a mess. Politically, he's, I don't get his politics at all. So he, his, his, uh, and then his machismo, but then his like, you know, rep in the rural and the indigenous, I thought was fabulous. So it was just a lot. I'm like, Que hago con esto? Uh, I don't think I had any serious aspirations of translating the Roca for all the reasons that you mentioned. Like, this, it shouldn't me, be me doing this. It should be like Borzutsky, some, some Chilean Americano doing this, right? Uh, and what happens is um, I, I done some for a uh, workshop in, um, in, in, in my PhD program at NYU with uh, Kathleen Ross, right? Uh, actually, there were a bunch of us translators, Monsieur Mateo and a whole bunch of other people in that class who went on to do lots of stuff in translation. And I did it as a kind of exercise. I'm like, what the fuck am I going to translate some Chilean poet? Que se yo de eso? Uh, and then I remember, I, like, when I got, this was, this was a 2005, 2000, maybe, way a long time ago. I forgot about it. Uh, I'd look at it when I pulled out my stuff and say, eh, you know, and then eventually when I get the job at Albany in 2008, I show it to Pierre Joris, who folks might know is one of our great uh, translators, just put out his last volume of Ceylon, which is like, oh my God, what a, what a life work and what an inspiration. And so Pierre was the first person to tell me, you should publish this, right? Uh, and I thought, really? Oh, I don't think so. And then I sent it to a couple of places and then it kind of happened. But I was always like doubting my, and I gave up tons of times on that project. And ultimately what got me to finish it was my friend, Jose Miguel Puret, who I know you met, right? I think you met, right? Uh, 
So my, my, mi hermano en la poesía, homie, uh, he wrote his, his dissertation uh, uh, on, on the Roca at the Universidad de Salamanca, which is now becoming a book. I think it should be out at some point in Chile. Um, and so just all the research that he did was so fascinating. I thought, wow, just as a geek, I thought this is really, really cool. And I asked him, can I use this in my introduction? And that gave me, and, and he also clarified a lot of the stuff that you're asking about through his like multiple trips to Chile and all the research on the ground. He did that, thought, okay, you know, through this guy, I have the authority, you know, and, uh, um, and ultimately I got it done. But I think it was also a way for me to exercise a kind of certain, just deuda, right, to, a, to the Latin American avant-garde, a kind of very ambivalent deuda. On the one hand, I love, what, what a freak, what a, what a genius in his own way. It's like, he's either ge genius or a hot mess. There's not a lot of in-between in the Roca. It's kind of the, the, but that's what's awesome about him. Um, but he felt emblematic of all the ways in which I felt um, defined, but also ambivalent about a certain kind of Latin American avant-garde tradition. Right? It was really linguistically, it was wizardry, you know, but then it was really macho and it was, it just had weird politics and I don't know. So it, it was a kind of working through of a whole set of ambivalent investments. I think that's kind of all of my projects. I think I felt that way with the New Yorican book. I talked to Edwin a lot. Uh, that book was written during the heyday of like New Yorican slam poetry, right? And I was so, it was so weird. Like you, you get these people come onto the slam scene, right? Edwin remembers as people who've been on the scene for like three months. And they get, in, they get like one poem that's ahead of the slam and they get an agent and they're like touring around the world. It was, just, it was bizarre. And then all the old poets can't even get a, a book published. The actual, the poets are actually founded the cafe. So it, I was really hostile, I mean, not hostile, I was ambivalent about slam the same way, but somehow in both cases, ambivalence is a big part of what draws me into particularly scholarly or translatorly projects. There's something I wanna resolve, right? And it never gets fully resolved, but I wanna work through it. Right, uh, and I say the same thing is true of my hashtag, uh, you know, Latinx project. I'm like, fuck hashtag politics. Who wants to write about social media? And who wants to write about Latinidad at a moment of our reckoning with, you know, anti-blackness and, and, and talking about mestizaje and stuff, ugh, right? But it feels like I have to work through things there that seem to me important and that I'm fascinated with. So it's pretty similar in that way. I think I, you know, I have an unresolved relationship with the Roca, but I say that admiringly because he's a badass and he's a punk. He's the epitome of El Poeta Punk, but he has all the problems, right? That like uh, punk, you know, subcultures can have in terms of, uh, um, you know, of just political stuff and, and the fact that stuff and so, and so on. But I, it just, it didn't let go of it in the same way with kind of the, the, the scholarly projects that I turned down with him. Um, Maybe like me, to see the Gallo's project would be the same thing, which is you know, what, what I've been doing now for artist books. Um, so yeah, I think if I'm not ambivalent about something, I don't write about it, because what's the point? If I know how I feel about it, then I'll, you know, I, there's a lot of stuff I love, but I can't write about critically, because I don't have a problematic relationship to it. So I can just say, hey, thumbs up, his book was fantastic, but I have nothing to say about it. And uh, a lot of, let's, say, let's just say a lot of the major poets in the US right now, I feel that way about their work, right? I'm like, it's fantastic, but I have no idea what to say about it. Not a lot, but some of them, right? And so it's good. I leave that to other people, and I focus on projects where I really feel like torn in a way, and where the project lets me work through some of those, some of those tensions. Thank you. Another question uh, in the, in the, to the poets who travels between language. Hola. Hola. Hola, buenas tardes, saludarte, acá desde, desde Chile. Saludos. Tengo un, eh, algo con, la, con el español centroamericano, que hay un ritmo. Acá en Chile nosotros tenemos un, un español más frío, a veces congelado. <ríe> eh, y hay una, una rítmica en, en el... En, en el hispanoparlante de Centroamérica, bueno, Puerto Rico, Miami, creo Caribe, también, ¿no? Caribe, la salsa, eh, hay algo ahí, hay un gen africano también que hace que tenga, bueno, el, el, el gen cubano también, que hace que tenga un sabor diferente, un, una rítmica, que a nosotros se nos hace muy alegre y sabrosa. <ríe> Me gustaría escucharte responder en español para poder escuchar ese... Esa forma de hablar, tal vez, esa, esa lengua materna, ¿no? ¿Que, que, ¿Que te conteste en español? Claro. Ah, seguro, sí, claro. 
Bueno, eh, eh, obviamente, y es algo que he hablado con Edwin también, o sea, creo que hasta los poetas más tímidos y menos performáticos, por lo general, no siempre, pero por lo general, un poeta puertorriqueño de la isla o de la, de la archipiélago de la diáspora, uno le ve el swing, algo, el son, algo tiene, en, hasta las poetas, las poetas más conservadores, más literarios, menos, menos performáticos, tienen algo de eso y tiene que ver, bueno, obviamente, con, con, con la inscripción, ¿verdad?, de, de, de esa lengua y, y, y todo eso. Pero también, no sé, eh, pienso, eh, eh, te, te recomiendo la, la charla de Raquel, porque un poco eh, eh, afirma todo eso, pero a la vez quiere complicar esa idea también del lugar de performing for somebody else, que para, para, también puede ser muchas, no sé, para, para gente caribeña pueden ser muchas fantasías coloniales. O sea, ponme el, el sombrero de Carmen Miranda con las frutas y te voy a mostrar lo performático. Look at, look at, look at how fabulous I am. Look at how sexy I am, right? So, eh, creo que de alguna manera... Eh, eh, aprendo de gente como Raquel, ¿verdad? Pues a, 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 a firmar eso con orgullo, ¿verdad? Ese swing, ese sabor y qué chévere, pero también buscar maneras de interrumpir esa, esa, eh, las maneras en que, en, que, en que nos leen y nos, y, nos, y nos reciben. Y si te llevaste eso en mi trabajo, bello y fabuloso, me encanta. Eh, pero me encanta el trabajo de Raquel en parte por eso, porque un poco, este tipo de traducción que hace, creo que enfatiza la intraducibilidad afectiva eh, y embodied ¿verdad? del cuerpo, de nuestra lengua. Y eso me parece importante. Si vamos a, a darle a la gente el swing y el, y el saoco y el sabor y lo sabroso y lo chévere, vamos a darle también the ugly on France of the British, lo duro, lo difícil, los silencios de la colonia, o sea, todo eso. Y de alguna manera, pues, eh, no sé. Como soy hijo único, creo que me gusta siempre ser el life of the party. ¡Miren! ¡Miren mi lógica cool! ¡Miren qué fabulosidad! ¿Verdad? Pero con el tiempo está tratando de buscar una poética que, que no pierda eso, que no pierda ese fun, esa, esa, ese, ese gozo, pero que, que, eh, que deje espacio también para pensar también en la que ese, la que ese gozo está eh, claro. montado por un montón sí. de grietas. ¿verdad? Y que esas grietas, que esa, hablar también desde las grietas que... Total, eh, sí. que marcan el voto. No sé, no sé si eso... claro, yo iba más también para la sonoridad que tiene, además del... Sí, gracias. Gracias. En francés, Jorge, una pregunta. Alonso, ¿qué ves ahí? Puede que te, que te responda en... en, 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 en Franklis o algo, ¿verdad? Pero, Franklis. <laughs> Playing music. I, I think hear music. Is that, is that your cat? Okay. You have a keyboard also, a little keyboard. This is my. Yeah. Um, if someone asks a question in French, she pregunta in Francais, I'll have uh, this person answer. This is. Je suis la personne francophone. Je ne parle qu'en français. Allons-y parler de la poésie. Voici expérimental. Franck Anglitch. Andrés Martín Gavins, who want to talk, Gerard, Gazal, Gazal. No, les, les puedo devolver la pregunta, si les, les puedo devolver una pregunta a ustedes. Claro. Just, uh, need, need to thank you, really enjoyed it. Oh, thank you. Fantastic. Really appreciate all the performances, amazing points. So. Oh, thank you. What's your question, uh, Urayuan? Um, I mean, I'm just thinking about. I mean, I, I, I'm, I'm a great reader of uh, Glissant. I was, you know, and it's, it's, a, it's a big part of the new book. And I, I love how Glissant writes about like um, uh, vehicular, the, the you know, vehicular languages of empire, like English and Spanish and French, and then like Creoles and the relationship between um, English and Spanish and French. And so, 
one thing he asked is whether um, is whether uh, um, Spanglish could be a Creole, right? And he kind of says, not really, but you know, but we can talk about it, right? Uh, and so I guess I'm just interested um, what that uh, uh, relationship between a vehicular language like Spanish or French, as some of you write in French, is and other languages, maybe Creole or indigenous languages. I'm thinking of like, obviously, you know, like Mapurungun in Chile or something like that. And I know it's a very complicated issue politically and so on. But I was struck that, you know, hanging out in Chile, it seemed like there was a real disconnect between, you know, just there's, the, you know, there's one, there's poetry in Spanish and there's poetry in indigenous languages. And I guess I was trying to get a sense of um, how folks understand, right, the, the marked or inflected, right, it's again, uh, Chile is not Puerto Rico, but it's not like Chile hasn't faced, right, uh, hasn't, hasn't faced military occupation and, you know, and, uh, and it's not like, it's not, it, your language is not inflected in other ways. So I guess I'm thinking, how do folks think about the, the relationship of or the obligation to, right, that, that these language, vehicular languages of empire, like Spanish and English and French, have to non-vehicular languages, it's like Creoles and indigenous languages, is that something they, they think about or they research or they incorporate into their own work? You know, I think partly because a lot of us are trying to just, you know, uh, imagine a less colonial formation for like Latin American studies, right? Where it's, you know, it's not just vehicular languages and how to, you know, how not to have like indigenous and Creole folks do that work themselves, but think about how we can engage in that, those archives, right? Um, um, just strategically, resourcefully, in solidarity, right, in, in, in our own work. And I know there's people like Vicuña in Chile, who, you know, outside of Chile or whatever, who have a really interesting uh, record in that regard. But I'm wondering if you, I guess, how you understand the vehicularity, la vehicularidad del español como lenguaje que viaja con el imperio, ¿verdad? Y como entenderse eh, sujeto, how do you understand subject to, to these, to these you know, languages of empire? And, what to do with them, I guess. I also want to talk uh, about the, the la grieta del lenguaje, no? La, la grieta del la grieta del goce, the yeah. I'll say in English, you know, the, the the grietas of joys, uh, oh, joy, of joys, of joy, and the crack and, of joy, which is not the joy of crack. That's another that's another special which you have to. Uh, yeah. I have to repair that kind of joy that we lost sometimes, and and. Yeah. Moments of sparks between language and between meanings and between and for me the Chile the, the, the most interesting thing is the name you know Chile nobody knows what it means it's like <laughs> so, uh, sometimes say it's pepper but sometimes says it's Chile it's like go away or you know it's like a sound name the polyphenical and, and nobody knows really well from where it comes then that mysterious gave to you uh, there is no <laughs> you know there is no in Chile you have so limit there is no limits you know you have north east and north west you're just north and south and, and Pacific Ocean um, but oh, yeah. at the same time I, I, I don't believe anymore in countries you know when, when you say I'm Bronx or I am Melville by example or different local moments in the centers of some city or in the outside and now with all the the pandemic styles of making poetry and and, and performing. Uh, I don't know, maybe the, the people who live in Chile could answer better than me, like Felipe or... I guess it wasn't so much about, it was more about what does it mean for you all to work in Spanish or English, if you think about your, you know, your not thinking, you know, language work that you do in particular, what, what is that, or French or whatever, what does that mean to you? I'm just curious. But, but no, thinking about the Chile stuff, it's so, it's so interesting to me as an outsider because that, the protest in Chile looked like so much fun. There was so much joy. And I'm like, Chilean poetry is so amazing. It's so incredible for a country that small, but it's also not, joy is not the first word that would come to mind when I think of Chilean poetry. Uh, so thinking about just how do you poeticize joy, but maybe more generally, just what it feels like for folks to work to say I work in English or I work in Spanish or I work in French, right? How do you, how to embody that, I guess, is something that, that interests me. I work in poetry. Um, I have to go cook dinner. Hasta la vuelta. Oh, oh. <laughs> Thank you. Chilean <laughs> Edwin
<laughs> yeah, I, I would like to say, uh, I was thinking about something you said like half an hour before about this, uh, uh, about uh, our situation, for, for example, as uh, Latino and whatever, uh, as being colonized or, or queer or, or different categories uh, that might be in, in a complex position uh, in front of others. But I, I was yeah. thinking also in relation with the language. I mean, uh, I guess we are all every day in different kinds of positions. We are in positions of power uh, every day. We are in, in, in positions of being attacked or being, uh, I don't know, weak. Uh, I mean, it's uh, sometimes uh, we like to think that, uh, uh, I mean, I, I'm speaking generally, of course, uh, we like to think like they are the the, pow the powerful and the powerless or the white and, and black and it's so complex. I mean, for example, uh, I I could go to Europe and say, oh, I'm from Chile, I'm I'm suffering so much, and but in in my country I have a, a job, uh, uh, a hope that has endured the the pandemic, which is uh, not so common, unfortunately, and. I mean, I'm, I'm in position of power in the academy, for example, when I'm teaching. Uh, I don't know, it's, it's very complex. So I think it's, it's interest, uh, interesting to think in that way. And also with the language, I mean, uh, sometimes also uh, language, even the language of the, of the people with the less power can be also a strategy of uh, lying or deceiving or I don't know, making fun of the, the people with power, the rich, whatever. So it's interesting to, to think it like a very complex flux of powers yeah. and all that. Yeah, that's beautiful. Uh, I, I, I agree with everything you said, and I think that's one of the powers of poetry, understood as a kind yeah. of expanded practice, right, is complexity, right? It's kind of one yeah. of the things that we do, both, you know, formal complexity, but also just we don't have answers, we can play with labels or play with identities, but ultimately, you know, uh, the, we don't instrumentalize, right? You really can't. Yeah, that, that, that's another thing because sometimes we are in, in the margins. I mean, not, not, maybe not as, uh, as people, but uh, uh, the, the area of poetry is maybe in the margins. And sometimes we, we can complain about it. There's, there's no money, whatever. And of course it would be better if, if it would be more money. But at the same time, uh, being in the margins, it gives you sometimes more freedom. I don't know, it's, it's, it's also complex in that way. So, uh, yeah. and what, what I usually say, uh, poetry is the cheapest of all arts. I mean, you just need a pencil. I mean, compare, compare with making music, uh, filming, whatever. I mean, those guys really had it very, very hard. So uh, perhaps we, we should complain a little less <laughs> the poets. <laughs> We wouldn't be poets, it would be complained. So, okay. so that's, that's what I'm doing. Oh, Mar Martin, what do you say? What do we do? Oh, you, you give us order. You are in the position of power right now. <laughs> Time to Vaqueru. There are two in the, in, the, in the group. I would love to, to listen to the voice of Martin Guy if you have yeah. the pleasure. To, I don't know. Martin. No, but I think he put a picture, you know, he always had the same picture in the, <laughs> in the same head that... Oh, uh, yeah, fooled us again. But I, I, I don't know, but just to return to that question, like, like the escapes of language, I seem like the Chilean uh, poetry territory language is full of like uh, earthquakes, uh, tsunamis, uh, you know, uh, marimotos, protestation, uh, feminist, powerful, it's like... You no, know, it's like... You feel that the earth is not finished to be created. It's like a, you have all the telluric force in the same little <laughs> space, uh, space time. It's really, really strange. And you have earthquakes every day. Well, every grade, different grade between five and one, once a day is a little one of five degrees, you know, the last day. But you don't feel it because you are habituated to that. At the same time, that kind of ch name of uh, Chile without meaning. That that is the 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 opening from that revolution of kind of political power of kind of poetry like uh, the feeling the roca, 
or in uh, Widobro and I don't know, and Diaz Casanueva, and that, that kind of poet, you know, like they, they, they prepare you to go to another space time and you can go beyond language and, and in between both. Uh, that's, that's beautiful. Yeah, I think going back to the question of why I translated the Roca, that's one answer now that I think about it is just the power of that vernacular, right? How you can use, you know, um, this like, you know, I guess popular language, but, you know, in a way that's not, again, instrumentalized to any kind of populist ideology. It's like advancing this, 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 this quest for a new poetry, but then making use of all the elements surrounding you, including just the, that the kind of seismic energy of like the land and, and you know the, and, and the language of the people it just seems so um you know uh, so powerful and its willingness to do so right so even though and you know the chilean vernacular is very different from the puerto rican one i think i thought well this is my kind of poet who's, who's investigating the kind of things that really interest me so i remember that one was it the he has that sur america poem which is like automatic writing from like 1927 and i'm like whoa, this is like a block of automatic prose and it's uh, describing all these like sights and sounds of, you know, of Chile. And I'm like, okay, this is, I didn't know this was possible in poetry, right? To do something that felt both like, that book. Documenting, right? A kind of, uh, you know, a kind of landscape, right? And Chilean landscape, but also just the landscape, right? Uh, language doing its thing. Uh, <laughs> That book, uh, U of the Roca, you know, the, it's a little U. Uh, I love it, yeah, I love it. That's the, the, that, the whole thing, I translated the whole thing, so. Oh, the conflict, the Roca, wow. Oh, the, whole, the whole of U. I had to, I had to pick, I guess, no, the whole of the Roca would be like, you know, 100,000 pages, basically. It's the, it's the, no, it's the, uh, I picked like one longer piece from each, from the early period and from the later period, because that's all I had room for, and then like shorter pieces. But ooh, I put in its entirety. But maybe you can uh, select. What I want, it's like ooh, you know. So punk rocker. Yeah. <laughs> A selection of poems for punk rocker. Punk <laughs> <laughs> rocker. I don't know if it's done. It must have been done before. I know he's been covered by punk. Uh, want to join to uh, rhythm for, for punk rocker? Uh -huh. <laughs> I want to ask you also about the, the language, you know, the language virus uh, concept. Also, how do you see that, uh, pun intended, mutating? ¿Cómo ven que vaya a mutar el concepto de lenguaje y virus? Tú eres un super... Rolpation, you're part of the mutation tonight, and you're going to mutate onwards. <laughs> no, porque está, it's wonderful. Sería lindo seguirlo. It would be great to keep it going, even once we're outside of you know, outside, whatever that means, of the, the pandemic context. Um, and just thinking of, if, if you have a vision for what that... Um, that Every is. Wednesday, the same space time. Okay, cool. Well, yeah, I should have mentioned the, the postcards, obviously, are playing with the, uh, the ACs, Gs, and Ts that make up the, the, the COVID sequence. So there's a whole... I mean, I wasn't going to get into it because it's way too, way too geeky. But, uh, yeah, I was working on a whole... Um, uh, rhymed long poem using the the coronavirus sequence but but if you're really really, really uh, literal about your language as a virus if I ever do this again so yeah, but yeah. Cool. I definitely hope I can check out other other things on Wednesday so pero quizás puede salir nuevamente a, a, afuera y mostrarnos el Bronx y hacer eh... Bueno, ya, ya, ya está oscuro, tristemente. So it's, uh, there's not a lot to see right now. And it's, it's still raining, así que... No la vacuna, el antídoto, ¿no? Con el... <risa> a, ver, a ver qué se ve ahora, no sé. Va a ser este, tinieblas, tristemente. El, anti, Pero, el, el capital, el anticapital, el dote, el antidote. El antidote. Na, nadie, ha hecho, nadie ha hecho walking tours todavía en la serie. No, dale, dale. Vale, bueno, vamos a ver si organizamos algo, pero, pero sí, ya mentira, a esta hora, a esta hora ya está bien oscuro, no se puede, ¿verdad? Pero... Te acompañamos, el Collective ahí, trans, Collective Trans Poetic uh, Wednesday. <risa> <risa> qué bien, ¿y quién, quién es la, la próxima persona invitada? El próximo miércoles sí a Rine, ¿no? 
Felipe? Y el otro después viene Aidan McCardle. Okay, bien. Luego viene eh, Mune, hay, hay, hay gente, hay, están, están ahí apareciendo muchos poetas hermanos en todos los en okay, todos los tractos del lenguaje. Okay. Y quizás sí, porque generalmente terminamos con una impro colectiva ahora, si te, nos, nos llevas hacia el Bronx y empezamos a hacer sonido y te acompañamos, ponte unos audífonos de repente. Y vamos, ah, eso, está yo, lloviendo bastante fuerte, está oscuro, así que no sé cuán... Ah, cuán ahí, ahí como un gato, ahí por abajo, te vas dentro del jardín, no sé. Bueno, a ver... Se por el otro lado, entonces. Vamos a ver cómo está la calle. Sí. No, no creo que el vecino está ahí con su, con su hip hop, pero <risa> veremos, veremos lo que hay. Bueno, les puedo dar... Mejor que una metralleta del hip hop. Igual. Ta, 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 ta. <risa> la autopista en toda su gloria. Estamos improvisando. La conexión está fallando. Por eso mejor no ando. Tendría que meterme en el teléfono para no depender del Wi-Fi. There is no connectivity anymore. So we stay on the ground floor. O nos quedamos en la puerta, en el espacio liminal, no subliminal, no hay nada criminal en este gesto, sino el deseo de robarme la cámara. That's right, I'm camera hogging, breaking con eso, that you invited me, so it's your problem. I thought we were going to improvise together, do you need a refrain? Alguien quiere hablar, y yo puedo tocar, puedo tocar, tocar, puedo invocar la posibilidad de otro lenguaje, paraje sonoro, y el coro se olvida fácilmente. Póngame ojo, señora, póngame ojo, eso va improvisar de nuevo use this performance so I think different kind of acts synapsi and holoscopica de que el corpía algo así testigo mi amigo esta es la carne hagamos otra cosa Sulfurosa. Revolution. Jiffy the Revolution. Here 
Poetry revolution. Consejo de Hombres me niega.
Dido scans and owner is co bundle in buying. Oka, claro, Ida, Ocuga. Oka, and I will be ethical. Era, era, era. Mañana, Montana, Montana, el reposo caliente aún no se also coming to the session. I'm 
Reunir coral, disque, costas, más bien humor, rumor de isla, pulsaciones, ruinas en flor, ruido de mar, cifras en rumbo, nudos instantes. Peninculados en una voz sin pista, el tú, yo, suma de signos, órbitas, luces, nombre, tus siglas, hay porque un país de raíz, musgo, son plenilunar. Luz proteica, voz musical, vértigo, umbral, lengua, limón, gris, vernáculo, detritus, solar, sol, sal, ser, sin sur, vid, de guano, ruta, origen, Certitud vocal, hueso, trifa, luminosa, ave, nido, Ay, Juan, no se llama, me hizo. Hermoso como vacuno joven es el canto de las ranas guisadas de entre perdices. La alta manta iguana es más preciosa que la pierna de la señora más preciosa. Lo más precioso que existe para embarcarse en un curanto bien servido. Digamos electronics. Saquen los electronics. Saquen los electronics. Para los electronics. Para los electronics. Para los subatonics. Para las propiedades. Tuve la felicidad. Para la pertenencia. Tuve la transparencia. Tuve la transparencia. Para la pertenencia. Tuve la pertenencia. Para la propiedad. Abajo es un árbol de culebra mordiendo un cuchillo de la pendeada, un cuchillo de esa carretera. No more language. No more language. No more language. No more language. Okay. Yo pienso que el lenguaje ya fue.
La infraestructura de la voz. Subir la cuesta del capital. Para darse cuenta, hay un desfiñadero.
to realize you can keep still waiting for you. Vamos a ver la marea. Vamos a ver la marea. Esto lo que tenemos. Esto lo que tenemos. Y vamos a ver. We found our way. Estamos la manera. Thank <laughs> you. 
You have the nice weather. You have the nice weather. After a sonnet by Sor Juan Inés de la Cruz. You have the nice cruz. En perseguirme mundo, que interesas? En perseguir, que interesas? Teresa. In Tennessee, you phone book. You use you, me. Sucks. <laughs> en que te ofendo cuando solo intento. In get still friends one before leaving, bro. Poner bellezas en mi entendimiento. Que me ass off. Send me and send the info. You know, mi entendimiento y las bellezas. You know me, and in the me, Las Vegas, us. Yo no estimo tesoros ni riquezas. Doing with the mall, the sodas, progress sucks. Y así siempre me causa más contento. Yeah, CC see, on outside Moscone Center. Poner riquezas. In mi entendimiento. When you get up, do you do me and que no, mi entendimiento en las riquezas. So you know, an inconvenience, ass kicker sucks. Y no estimo hermosura que vencida. Email to the animal. So Karen, see there. Este espojo civil de las edades. This, this will see you. Benefit added. Mi riqueza me agrada de mentira. Do you think it's a matter of cream and be there? Teniendo por mejor en mis verdades. Any and go for me tomorrow. Read about this. Consumir vanidades de la vida. Cancel me? Too funny. I'm going to be there. Que consumir la vida en vanidades. Get on, son of you. I love you there. En vanidades. So, Juan Inés de la Cruz. ¡Woo! Traducida por el teléfono. Bellísimo. Toda traducción es telefónica. <laughs> Todo performance es polifónico. Real poetry. You can't spell polifónico without fun. <laughs> Cuando ya vas bajando la calidad de los chistes, ya creo que es hora. Polifónico, afónico. <laughs> Poliafónico. Poliafónico. <laughs> eh, eh, buenísimo, Urayuan. Ha sido una gran sesión. Qué sí, chévere. Gracias, ¿no? increíble, increíble. Ustedes son fabulosos y qué increíble espacio han creado aquí. Sí, Mata bueno. mía que no. es que sabía que si empezaba a venir iba a, 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 a olvidar todas mis responsabilidades y pasarme seis horas aquí toda la semana. Pero ahora que llega el invierno me puedo cerrar entonces con ustedes Pero, los miércoles. Ahora que llegaste tú somos tres horas mínimo. <risa> Okay. Nos vemos la que viene. Chao, chao. Gracias. Gracias a todos. Gracias. Feliz la próxima semana. Venga. Venga, adiós.
Bona nit. Bonga.